So we're going to do two things. All right. First, we're going to go over Chapter 2. And along with that, I've got another one of those um, the pre-test or the, the study guide for you. I'll give you one for Chapter 2 when we get done. Okay. Then we're going to go in and we're actually going to create a very simple HTML document. Everybody can do that. All right. And then we'll add a simple CSS document to it. This is all the stuff we'll be working towards. So if it doesn't make a lot of sense, it probably isn't supposed to right now. All right. So again, HTML syntax, CSS syntax. If you decide or if you think, you know, I don't know if I like this visual code, notice they've got about 15 pages on brackets if you want to look at that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Then we're going to talk about how to test, debug, and validate our files. So we're going to do all of that stuff today. And it won't be nearly as hard as it may sound like it is. Now, a couple things. You look up on the screen here. Yeah, you see that. But I want to just concentrate on this thing in blue. When you create an HTML document, there actually is some form to it, so to speak. You'll put this line at the top of every HTML file you create. The word doc type can be in uppercase, lowercase, or you can even mix the case. What you're going to find when I create mine, I'll make the word doc type in lowercase. Why? Because everything else is. All the other tags are in lowercase. This is the only one that doesn't have to be. I don't know why they did that, but they did it like that. This is letting the system know that the document type that we're using is not just HTML, but it's HTML5. It's the latest and greatest. You used to have to write a lot more in the doc type statement than you have to right now. Okay. So let's 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 say that Max says, well, that sounds interesting. I'd like to hear some more about that. And I'm like, well, I don't have time to tell you about it right now. So this is the first thing I'm going to show you. And I know you you all have internet access so you can all go out to this all right this is the spot I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a website right now and I would recommend you don't have to bookmark it because it's not hard to remember but I'd recommend you go out to it so you can see it and it's called w3 schools.com that's it all right and so I'm gonna put in w3 schools.com and I'm gonna hit enter okay says the world's largest developer site. Well, the key thing here is, if you look, if I click here, see that? I click there and it gave me tutorials. Now if I click that, they have HTML tutorials, they have CSS tutorials, they have JavaScript tutorials, they have Bootstrap tutorials, they have tutorials on basically anything and everything in this class. A lot of times if you go out and you say, hey, I'd really like to know about the HTML5 doc type, which we just talked about. If I do that and I hit enter, notice what's going to come up a lot of the time, first or second, W3 schools. All right. So if you want to know more about the doc type, you can click on there and it shows you, okay, and it says, well, it used to be that you had to type, this is what we type now. That isn't too bad. It used to be you had to type something that looked like this. Or like this. I can explain to you what those mean, but it means you're using older versions of HTML. That's what it means. All right, so there's some stuff that's allowed and some stuff that's not allowed. What does that mean? HTML is about 100 to 125 predefined tags that have a special meaning. So notice if I type in HTML tags, what comes up first? Second, W3 schools. And it shows you these are all the tags right that you're seeing scrolling here. These tags make up HTML. I don't, I've never counted them. I would think there's upwards of a hundred. Okay. What you'll notice when you look at these, some of these tags are red. You see the screen? See where they're red? That means they're deprecated. What does that mean? 
That means that if you're doing new development, you shouldn't use these tags that are red. You know, I, I told somebody this, and they told me that this was a, what I'm about to tell you was kind of a sick acronym. Because they said, I don't understand what, de what deprecated is. And I said, we're all deprecated, right? You'd like to live forever, but you're not going to live forever, okay? Chances are pretty good. I'm going to live a lot less than you are because you're a lot younger than I am. But when something in here is deprecated, what it means is it's still supported, but when you do new development, you shouldn't use it. That's what it means. But there's no cops out there that if you use an acronym tag, there, there's no HTML police that are going to say, you can't do that. But it's recommended that you don't do that. All right? It's it's things that you used to do, but now it's recommended that you don't do. Which is outdated tag. You can call them that. That's probably a good way to look at it. So, at the top, the first line you have in there is you say, our document type is HTML. And when you just put it in like that, it means we're going to write an HTML5 document, the latest in the latest. Look on the screen if you would. Here's the beginning HTML tag. Here's the ending HTML tag. See this? Beginning, end. We'll hit the lang in just a minute. Don't worry about it. But you can technically leave that lang off. You don't. And I'll explain why later. But if this was HTML and it just had the greater than sign here, the only difference then between this one and this one is endings, ending tags like this have a slash before that. See that? Other than that, they look the same. What you'll find that's nice is in the editor we're using, a lot of times when you create stuff, it'll create the ending one for you. All right. So, anybody want to guess what this means? Lang equal en, it means we're using English. If you leave it off, it defaults to lang equal en. All right. So it's as though you put it there. That said, later I'm going to show you how to validate a document. All right. If you leave this off, lang equal en, it still validates, but you'll get a warning that says you should have a lang attribute on there, it's telling you it's good practice to put it on there. So we'll put it on there for ours. All right. Then there's actually two sections in this document, a head and a body. The head, this. That's all stuff that does not appear on the web page itself. It's stuff the browser needs, the search engine needs, etc. Right. This is stuff that does appear. All right. So if you notice here, if I, as an example, if I went in there and grabbed all of this code, all right, and one of these is copy, I believe. Done. Oh yeah, there you go. Copy. All right. It's not easy to copy from these from from Vital Source, which is what I'm using. All right. Even if it you know, says copy, sometimes it doesn't work. Just plain doesn't work. And then I got to manually copy or type it in, which is fine if I have to do that. All right. Let's pin that to the start bar. Let's pin that. To as far. There we go. All right. So earlier, we started to create this file. If it comes up. All right. And we put this in there. I'm going to remove this whole thing that I put in. In fact, I'm going to remove this whole thing. And I'm going to get rid of all this. And I'm going to put in the one that was in the book. All right. So there it is. And it gives me a bunch of other stuff that I don't need. Would you agree, looking at this, it may not be formatted pretty, all right? And in fact, would you agree that it's formatted ugly? Would you agree with that? All right, I'm going to right mouse click on here. And boy, oh boy. Okay, prettier. I don't know what's going on, what's supposed to happen in here. What is supposed to happen in here 
is I'm supposed to be able to right mouse click on here and rather than showing me what it's showing me like this it should show me a pop-up menu that says beautify on it I click beautify and boom everything's fixed something's goofy with this machine and you might say well why don't you fix it because my other one is supposed to be ready this afternoon my new machine all right so all right but the point is this if I come through here I've got this demo file right and I my should my live server should work it all just looks too funky right now so here's my demo file and I guess I probably didn't save file um, save okay now is that supposed to turn you on and, and have you think oh my god am I glad I'm in this program but what I want to show you is this all right so this doc type doesn't do anything this HTML doesn't do anything this head here does do something all right the first thing is it's got here meta char set equals UTF-8. You're going to hear about this later. Okay. Back when I was your age, the character set that was used for a computer was, and you may have heard this term already, was something that was, I'm sorry, it was called ASCII. A-S-C-I-I. -I. And it's an acronym that means American Standard Code for Information Interchange. You may or may not be aware of this. If I go into my, my on my keyboard and I type in a J, right? I type in a J. Don't I expect that what I'm going to see on the screen is a J? Makes sense, right? Okay. But the computer doesn't understand a J. The computer only understands zeros and ones. So that <clears throat> J has to be converted into a series of zeros and ones <clears throat> that the computer can understand. Okay? Yes. Well, the, that, that's part of it, yeah. But, okay, so <clears throat> back in the days when we were a national society, not an international society, ASCII worked just fine. But ASCII supported only 255 characters. Now think about it. A to Z, that's 26 characters, lowercase. A to Z, that's 26 characters, uppercase. Okay? So that's already what? So 255 minus 26 minus 26. There's 10 numbers, minus 10. Then you've got all your special characters. Comma, asterisk, etc. And let's just say, let's say there's 30 of them. I don't know what there. I don't care. But that's 50. 26, 52, 62, 92, that's almost 100. The bottom line is they ran out of space. space. Yeah. So what they decided to do was to come up with a new character set that's called Unicode. All right? The difference between this is this supports 255 characters. This supports more than... 100,000 characters. So it's got every every language that exists and even I some some people have used this to make like Klingon language and other stuff. All right? But the reason I'm telling you that is up here, the, see the line that I've got the cursor by? It says the character set we're using is UTF-8, which is universal transformation format, which means we're using Unicode. All right? Oh, and, and just in case you cared, the first 255 characters of the Unicode character set are the old ASCII character set. Yes? So, with, um, say I wanted to make something in Japanese. Yes, you can, you can, you can do that. Can you type it in English and translate it Japanese? Or well, give you an example. You tell me if I'm answering your question. One of the one of the programs I've have I have students typically create in the Android class is a currency calculator. 
So you type in 36, you, you click a button, it shows it to you in yen, it shows it to you in pesos, etc. And we use the Unicode character for the yen symbol. Now, could you, could you, with what you said, I think you'd have to either buy a converter or write your own. All right. So, so my question is like, if I, if I want to write it in English and translate Japanese, then I need to you would, you could potentially be using some of the Unicode stuff to do that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so as we look at this, look at the next line. See where it says title San Joaquin Town, and you can't see it, but it says San Joaquin to Town Hall. See that? That title is what appears right here. See what happens when I put my mouse over it? San Joaquin. All right. So that title that you put in your head section is what appears in the tab at the top. All right. And that's always going to be the case. What we're going to do when we create our first website that's got like three pages in it, we're going to make that St. Louis Blues site that I told you. We'll have Blues Home, Blues About, and Blues Contact. That's what you'll see up there. And we'll have to make the title on each one. Okay. But notice, that doesn't appear on the web page itself. So anything in the head section does not appear on the web page itself. So I want you to understand. You then, have to write it again. Pardon? You have to write it again. Oh, you mean you for, for this? Yeah, yeah. Yes. This is the stuff in the body section. Okay? Um, so this is what's called an H1 tag. There's H1, there's H2, there's H3, there's H4, there's H5, there's H6. There's six of them. The higher the number, the smaller the print. You understand what I'm saying? All right. So we wanted the biggest one there is, so we used an H1 and put San Joaquin Valley Town Hall. That gave us this. All right. <clears throat> then the next three things in here have got a P in front of them. You may have already guessed this. It means they're paragraphs. So we're going to have a paragraph that says, Welcome to San Joaquin Valley Town Hall. So that paragraph, that paragraph right there is this one. Does that make sense? The next paragraph, we have some amazing speakers in store for you this season, is this one. And then... Speaker information is this one, and I'll explain the hyperlink and stuff in just a second. But notice, P to begin, slash P to end. P to begin, slash P to end. P to begin, slash P to end. All of this stuff is in the body section. The body section is what does appear on the web page. Yes? So if you're just trying to go like the one... Paragraph is like super, like not long, but like not like not like spreading it out. Would you would you would you just start with one P and end with a slash P at the end? Or you always do that. Yes. So I'm saying, would you one paragraph with that, and then just instead of doing P line slash P P line slash P. If you wanted all in one paragraph, you'd yeah. only have one P okay, and a slash P. Yes. Now, I'm going to show you something, and we're going to go over this a lot in the future. There is a site out there that if, I, if I'm going and creating text that I want to, let's say I want to put a bunch of text in here on a page, all right? I can go out to a site that's called lipsum.org, and I can say, hey, give me five paragraphs. Click there, boom. There's five paragraphs. It's, it's basically, it looks like Latin, to be honest with you. So I come in here, and whoops, I come back to here. All right, I'm going to remove the two paragraphs. I want to keep this paragraph that's here. But I'm going to remove, in fact, well, let's just add it to the bottom. All right, I'm going to add these three lines. Now look at this. See that? That's all junk, right? Well, I'm going to come up to the first one, and I'm going to put a P tag. Oops. P tag at the beginning. 
See how it automatically puts the ending one in there for me? So I'm going to grab that one. Do a control X to cut it. Move down to the end of the paragraph. Like I said, this machine is just going a little nuts out right here. And paste it in. Then I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to create another P tag. Not the ending one, just the beginning one. All right. And I'm going to go and put that one in. Then I'm going to put another P tag in. All right. And I don't know what this is going to look like because I only put in three of them. But you, hopefully you get what I'm saying. Okay. So I'm going to do a file save. I'm going to go back to what I have here. All right. Wow. Is that pretty obvious what I just did? Yeah. All right. And, I mean, you will be doing stuff that fast. Let's talk about this line right here, this line, because that's the different one. So let's talk about that one. That's up here. You hit enter. So that is this right here. You can space this stuff out basically just about any way you want. I like to, mine will typically look like this because it's real easy for me to see what goes inside of what. All right? This means it's going to be an anchor. In other words, it's going to be something that's by default underlined. All right? This is where I want it to go. So I want it to go to a file and open up a file that's called speakers.html. If I try to open it and that file doesn't exist, I'm going to get an error. Okay? And this A again means begin the anchor tag. This A means end the anchor tag. And what you put in between there, this, that's what's underlined. So notice if I change this, for example, to https colon slash slash rankin.edu. All right. And then I come back here. And, whoops. I come back here and I refresh the page. I've got the wrong one. There we go. All right. Doesn't look different except when I click, what happens? Now, what you may or may not have noticed, not only did it take me to Rankin, but I'm in the same window I was in before. That's considered bad what's called netiquette. In other words, if I click here, some people might think I'm still on the same website. I'm not on the same website. So if I want to do this and have Rankin appear in a new window, well, like this, all I do is I come in here and I say underscore blank, which means, hey, put it in there and put it in there in a new window. So it's not going to look any different. But notice when I click, all right, well, I screwed up, but that's not that the big thing. The big thing is, notice it opened it up in a new window. All right. So you're going to learn how to do all this stuff. It's not difficult. In fact, I know what the error was on there. This, where I've got this underscore blank, it should have said, okay, href. In here, it should have said target. You have to be able to spell, though. Target equals underscore like. All right, which means open it up in a new window. It, but is it okay? Nope, nope. It was, but I think I closed it. All right. But it, it, I, I'm just again, all this stuff that we're doing, we're going to be. After a while, you're going to be like, oh, I, I get it. All right. But it's nothing that you really have to go in and memorize. All right. You may have to, I guess, for a chapter two test. But when you're working on homework, when you're working on tests. You, you got the stuff available to you up here. All right. What they show you on the bottom of each one of these pages then, as you see right here, is a summary of what was on the previous two pages. So a document contains elements, documents. This right here actually is a, a picture 
of your document that gets created for you. We're going to talk about it a lot later in the semester. It's called the DOM or the document object model. All right. This is the actual code. So when you write code, a DOM gets created for you automatically. Do you have to worry about that? All right. What we'll talk about later is if you can master this, if you understand how this works, this is nothing. But if you want to be able to manipulate this code, all right, this is one way you can do it. That's what we're going to learn later. All right. Now, I'm going to show you something. And again, don't worry if it makes no sense, really. But I'm going to go back up to the top. I'm going to go back to this head section that I was in here before. All right. So I'm back in my head section. All right. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in this style. All right. And I'm going to say I want all of my paragraphs to have a color of green. Okay. And you might say, well, big deal. Well, I do want to bring this back up. So let me find it. There it is. Is that pretty obvious what I just did? What you just saw then was your first example of CSS, cascading style sheets. What I did was I told the system, take every paragraph I have, change the text color to green. What if I want to change not just the text color, but the background color of my paragraphs? All right. I'm from Wisconsin. I'm a Packer backer. So I'm going to say here background color gold all right you see one of the things that we just added here gives us these little color things to show us what they'll look like all right so we put that in there and now again is that pretty obvious what we did and you're like yeah it is Jeff but boy that's really hard to read okay so as an example I'm going to come back in here again, and I'm going to say for my paragraphs, I want the font size to be 2 rem. Again, don't worry about what that means. All right. So with just making a couple changes, you can see how you can drastically affect the way, the, the way your document looks. And that's what we're going to be doing. All right. So, believe it or not, I've already gone through now a lot of the stuff that's in the rest of the chapter. It says how to code elements and tags. Most tags, not all, most tags have a beginning and an end. A beginning and an end that look the same, except the end tag has a slash. Okay? Now, there are some tags that don't. They do not have two tags. VR. That stands for line break. If you want to put a blank line someplace, you do a BR tag. Okay? There is no ending tag for it. But you do have your choice, just so you know. You can write your BR tag like this, which is how literally everybody does it. Or you can write your BR tag like this. Why would you want to do that? To show that it's a tag that doesn't have an ending tag on it. Okay? So again, if I come back to this code example that I just have been showing you here, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to remove a couple of these paragraphs because they're just long. So let me get rid of some of this stuff here. So it now looks like this. Okay, it's shorter than it was. All right. But I just want to quickly show you. I'm in, I'm in the middle of a paragraph here. Would you agree? Yeah. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in here BR, BR, BR. That's all I did. Put three BR tags in there. Why? To show you what happens when you put in a BR tag. Yes. So is there any way to make like the entire background color? Or is it just background yes. Background? I think this is going to answer your question. So if I said body, which means the body of my document, 
color blue. But notice what it does. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, that was background color. I shouldn't have said color. Background color blue. That was my error. So that'll take everything that I haven't overwritten with a different color. All right. Oh, yeah. You, there's a lot of stuff you can do with very little work. All right. Now, a couple of other things. Notice on here, this is really important, so all of you, please look at this. Notice here, we have a P tag. It starts here, and it ends there. And inside of there, we want to take the word today and make it italicized. So that's an I tag here and an I tag there. The point is, these, are, these two tags here are inside of those two tags. Does that make sense? You always want to do it like this. In other words, you don't want to take your I tag and put it out there after your P tag. Because this is inside of this. So that's called nesting your tags. You always want to make sure you nest your tags correctly. So that's correct. That's incorrect. The real big problem with this is some browsers, even if you do it incorrect, it'll show it like it's correct. But if it is, what I'm going to do later is I'm going to make do something like that and put it in error. And then when we do what's called validate our, our document, it'll show you then when you validate it. It's like you screwed up. All right. So it will be like all snap, like Google It won't do that, no. Oh. No. All right. If you look up on the screen here, here's an example. See this thing? The name of that tag that's there in blue is an A tag. The other stuff that's inside of it that says href equal contact dot HTML, that's called an attribute. For instance, if somebody said to me, okay, what's your name? I said, Jeff Scott. And they said, how tall are you? And I said, six feet tall. All right. Then if I had a property called height, the value of that property would be six feet. All right. So this is an A tag. An A tag needs what's called an href. So that's the tag. That's the attribute. Technically, the attribute is href, and the value is contact.html. Do you have to worry about that? No. I'm just giving you some terminology. That's all I'm doing here. And there's rules with this. There's a certain way people typically do it, but if you don't do it that way, it'll still work. All right, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Anybody know what this means, the word Boolean? You ever heard that term before? Sometimes it's pronounced just it's just called bool in some programming languages. Boolean is something that can only be true or false. Remember before we talked about that everything you put into a computer has got to be put into a series of zeros and ones. Remember that? Zero is false, one is true. So if I've got a field that I create that's called married. All right, and let's say I am married, so I'd say married equal true. With any of you, like Maya, I don't know if you are or not, that's your business, but let's say you're not. So you'd say married equal false. That makes sense? So for a Boolean attribute, the only two types of values it holds are true or false. All right. Sometimes you want to write comments in code. In other words, what if I want to come in here and I want to let the user know that I got this, I want to let the user know I got this code from lipsum.org. Are you with me? I just want to let them know that. Well, I can't come in here and say, hey, I got the code below from lipsum org. I mean, I can type that in, 
Nothing, not a problem. I could type it in. There it is. But I don't want that to show on the screen. I want that to be a comment so if somebody is reading my code, they know where I got it from. I don't want it to actually show there. So what I do is this. If you look up on the screen. I use a less than sign, exclamation point, minus, minus. And that starts the beginning of a comment. And then I put minus, minus with a greater than sign. That ends a comment. You see how it's green? Yeah. If you got green stuff in here like this, it means right. it's a comment. It won't show on screen. Look at this. Remember before I said href is the name? Those are red. Tags are brown. All right. Attribute names are red. This is what you get with a color-coded editor. So now notice with this comment that I put in here, if I go back to my code and I refresh, you can see where the line is. It's now gone. So comments do not show on the page. Neither does white space. Now this confuses a lot of people. Okay, and what I mean is this. I'm going to type in this. I'm going to create a new paragraph on here, and I'm going to put my name in here. Jeff Scott. I mean, you, you're pretty confident over what that will look like, right? Okay, but I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to do this. Okay, I, put, I hit enter ten times. Would you agree with that? Or at least that I hit it a bunch of times. All right, let's look at it. It's because, you're, yes, you're definitely on the right track. It's because I didn't put any BR tags in. So it looked at all that white space as being like I hit the, the space bar once. So if I wanted 10 of them in here, I could come back in here and I could put in Jeff. And then I could put in here BR and then copy it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Uh, I could do that. My question is. Well, wait, wait. But, and once I do, there it worked. Yes. Do you like BRX10? No, there's no shortcut that I know of for, for something like that. But also, there's no shortcut for what I'm about to show you. What if I, okay, I'm going to get rid of all these blanks. Come on. Just get up. All right. How many times if I do this? Oops. How many blank spaces do you think are going to be between there? One. What if I want there to be a bunch of blank spaces? All right, I can put them in, but I have to manually key them in as ampersand NBSP, and I'm going to put in about three or four of them. All right, and I don't expect you to, if I said, hey, what does that mean? I'd be more surprised if you knew it. All right, it stands for non-breaking space. That's what it means. So notice now with that in there, if I come back to here, see, there's my spaces. All right. So that was a little bit on white space. Okay, so we've, I've already started showing you CSS. Let's look at this. Because CSS, you're going to probably find until we get to JavaScript, you're going to breeze through the HTML stuff and be like, yeah, bring it on. This ain't hard at all. We'll get to the CSS, and some of it will be a little difficult. We'll get to the JavaScript, and it's, it's called a programming language for a reason. I don't know about the rest of you, but like in high school, I had to take Spanish, a foreign language. And uh, I did okay in it in high school because they told me, just take two years. That'll be enough. That's what I thought until I got to college. And they said, no, it'll take four years. So I had to take two more years, and it was a lot harder in college. All right, so what does this say? Look on the screen. Look at the box that's in 
orange here. This says every H1 tag that I have in my document, I want it to have a text color of navy. Does that make sense? The H1 is known as the selector. It's what you're selecting. I showed it to you before with a paragraph tag. All right. The color is the property. And the value is navy. The whole thing put together is called a declaration. So what I want to show you now is I want to go back to that H1 tag. This thing. We didn't do anything to this. So it's got all the default values. Default color, default size, default everything. So we're going to change that. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say, hey, my H1 tags, if I've got any H1 tags in here, let's say we want the background to be black. And we want the color to be white. And we want the font size to be, I don't know, uh, 2 rem. And we want the font, no, it's the font family to be cursive. All right. So you can see what I've changed. I changed the background color, the actual color of the text, the font size, and the font family. I'm going to do a file save, go back to here, watch how this changes. Is that pretty obvious? The first line came in and said, I want to change the background color to black. The next line said, I want to change the text color to white. The next line came in and said, I want to change the font size to make it double what it normally would be. And the next one said, I want to use what's called a cursive font. All right. Not only are there all these fonts, just one, one sec, about 20 to 30, something like that, but look on the screen here. Our buddies at Google have created Google fonts. There are 952 extra ones that you can use. It'll take you a while to just work your way all the way through, you know, taking a look. Well, it takes a while to refresh the screen, but you get the idea. We're going to be working with Google Fonts. You will eventually create a website where you'll make your own theme for it, so you'll make your own fonts, your own colors, etc. Question. So when you say cursive, it doesn't actually look like it's No. That's just the way that if if I want it, there is a font that does that. I don't remember what it's called. Okay. All right, but just I mean, and it's a good question, but just to show you, I think there's one that's called Fantasy, I believe. All right. So just to show you how you can make it look a lot different, you see it there. Okay. Is well, I don't like that font. On the right website, it might look really good. Tell you something, and you might find this amusing, maybe a little bit. I find it funny. There's a guy who's made his living for several years. He goes out and he looks at websites, and then he writes a book, and it's called Web Pages That Suck. <laughs> and if you go to webpagesthatsuck.com, he goes through and he ranks them. Year by year. You know, my wife always laughs because I don't watch it all the time. But every once in a while, if you've ever seen that TV show, Diners, Divins, yeah. Drivins and Dives, I think it is, yeah. with Guy Fieri, she's like, why are you watching this? I said, I find it amazing a guy was smart enough that he can go around the country and eat, and he gets all his food for free, and people love him. I mean, I look, I look like I should be that guy. But the, the point is, the guy's like, what a great story. That's what this guy has done. Yeah. You can actually buy this in a book form, web pages that suck. That's funny. So we're going to look at CSS in a lot of depth. 
and in a lot of breadth of coverage. There's a lot more to it than this. We'll learn about what are called IDs. We'll learn about what are called classes. We'll learn about a lot of different ways that this stuff is used. Okay. Now, I want to I wanna show you something. Please, everybody, look at this. What we're basically, we're not doing this right now. Tomorrow, I think, when you come in here, you're going to take that test. We're going to take it as a class. We'll, 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 believe me, we'll all have it done in a half an hour. Okay. We will. Because we're doing it as a class. Okay? Now, what I'm going to ask is that when, I'm going to ask the questions, A, B, C, or D. But I'm going to ask that you take your review sheet, just put it behind you. See what you remember. But if you don't get it right, no one knows it. I'll give you the answer. You're all getting 100. All right? When we get done, we're going to create a simple page. And we'll create, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll work on it. We'll do a few things to it. Then I'll say, now, here's some pages. Here's some tags. Go out and play with it. That's how you learn. All right? It's just by trying stuff, trial and error, whatever you want to call it. But what I wanted to show you is typically what you do. Let's say that I was going to create a website. And I'm going to call my, I'm going to create a website. It's going to be on thoughts. And it's going to have four pages. All right. And it's going to have a home page, which is called index.html. It's going to have a page called about.html. It's going to have a page called contact dot html and it'll have a page called pups for sale dot html are you all with me you all understand that and i'm going to assume that this page is going to have a lot of pictures of dogs in it does that make sense okay so if i was creating that what i would do to begin with is i would come over here on my desktop and i would create a folder I'd call the folder docs. Oops. I would call the folder docs. D O G S. Okay, so I've got that done. Then I want these four files inside of it. Okay, so I'm going to open that folder up and I'm going to, I'll right mouse click and I'm going to choose new text document, but I want to change it to index.html. And it says, hey, it ended with .text. You changed the extension. Do you want to rename it? Yes. So there's one. I'm going to create another one here. And I'm going to call this one about.html. Yes, I want to change the extension. I'm going to create another one. This isn't the only way you can do this. That's called contact.html. Yes, I want to change it. And finally, I want to create one more that's called pupsforsale.html. Okay? Notice the icon on each one of those. That's the icon saying that they're a web page because that's a Google Chrome icon. All right? Now, I mentioned to you that I'm going to have a bunch of pictures of dogs. So typically what I do is I'd come in here and I'd add another folder called images. And that's where I'll put all my pictures. Then I create another folder that's called CSS, where I put my CSS. And eventually what we'll get to is we'll create another folder called JS, where we'll put our JavaScript. So that's how you'd set a website up. Okay, so why did I show you that? I mean, is you're like, I don't care. I want to show you something that's actually very simple, but I want you to see it. All right? And that is this. I'm going to go back here. This is that file I've been working on. I'm going to close it. I'm going to close this junk one. I don't want to save it. Would you agree right now there's nothing in here? Would you all agree with that? All right. Well, I'm going to come in here. Come on. Would you? Oh, my goodness. There. And I'm going to grab my dogs. And I'm going to drag it right there and just drop it. Okay. Well, what the heck did that do? 
Notice what it did. It, op it opened up the folder automatically for me inside of Visual Studio Code, and it now gives me access to all my other folders and all those HTML files. Okay. Now, just to show you, because that's not the only way of doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a file, and I want to get I want to get rid of it. So uh, open it up again, and let's do a file. Well, what I want to show you is this too. I can say open folder, and I can do it like that. What I want to show you is the easiest, most intuitive way, at least in my opinion, of doing things. So if you say, hey, hey, Jeff, did you know we can also do this? Did you also know you can do it this way? Usually, yeah, I know it. But are you better off me teaching you eight ways of doing a simple operation and then letting you pick or just showing you one way and letting you learn the other seven on your own? That's the way I'm looking at it. Because we've got, believe it or not, we got two books. We got a lot of stuff to go over. Yeah. All right. So that they show you that in here too, how you can go and work on that different stuff, etc. All right. And this is that bracket section. So this is how to open a file in brackets, how to close a file in brackets, etc. All right. More brackets there. This is the last part of the chapter. How to test, how to debug, and how to validate CSS files and HTML files. So I'm going to show you that. Remember this thing that we created before? So I'm going to come back into here. Okay, close welcome. File. Close folder. All right, now there's nothing in here at all. Hopefully you agree with that. I have no files open. But I'm going to come back in, and I'm going to open back up. So I'm going to open file, and I'm going to go back to my desktop, and I'm going to find that one that we call demo. Okay, you all know what this one is. All right, but what you don't know is what I'm about to show you here. I'm going to grab the entire file, copy it to the clipboard. Then I'm going to go out. All right, and please watch this. I'm going to put in here, I'm going to search for validate HTML. And the first thing that comes up is this thing, validatorw3.org. I'm going to click that. I'm going to say I want direct input. I'm going to paste in that file I just put in there. That's my file. And I'm going to click check. If it comes up green, there were no errors. Okay? Now, why is that a big thing? Because I want to show you this. Remember this before I said that? that in, and Max, you said that means language equals English. Now I'm getting rid of that. Okay? And I'm going to click check again. In fact, I think it's going to go back. And it's going to make me redo it. So that's fine. Boom. Should have just refreshed. But now, boom. Now notice what it gave me. Warning. You should add a language attribute to what you're working on. It's even letting you know where it found the problem. So I'm going to put that back in there. All right, so I'm going to put back in here. Lang equals yen. Okay, but look on the screen, please. I'm going to purposely spell something else wrong. See where it says head right there? I'm going to make it say had. I'm making a mistake in there on purpose. Oops. Do that. And I'm going to click check. Error. Straight tag called had. It doesn't have a clue as to what we're trying to do. All right. And it's letting you know where it was. So I can click on there, and it's taking me right back on my document to where it was. 
All right. Now, not only can I go and validate my HTML, but if you look again up on the screen, please, I can come in here, type in validate. We're going to take a break in a minute. Validate CSS. And that one's called Jigsaw for whatever reason. Now I'm going to go back and just grab that CSS that I put in here, this stuff. So grab all that. I'm going to paste that in there. Click check. See that? Didn't find any errors. It even gives you this little thing here that some people actually put on the bottom of their web pages. All right. But if I go back again, and for body, I'm going to type body wrong. BDY, make a couple other errors. Set of green, I'm going to call it green spelled wrong. It's background, I'm going to put Goldilocks. I'm purposely putting junk in here. But notice it says, oh, you have at least a couple errors. Gren and Goldilocks. So when you try, when you go in and you validate your documents, if you've got errors, it lets you know. All right? Well, and it's also very important. The bad thing is the, the uh, estimate is 95 to 99% of the websites in the world were not validated. Really? Yes. That's dumb. Yeah. But guess what? 100% of yours will be. Okay? It's 1044. Let's come back at 11 o'clock, please.